the stunning California coastline is quite a sight. But I'm not here today to soak up the scenery. I've come to meet a man who's aiming to do something that will be literally out of this world. And while I'm here, I'll be pushing my own limits at the Santa Barbara Skydive Center. <laughs> So, you can actually just put your passport on. Okay, sure. yeah. 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 Tomas Kozlowski used to be a mountain rescuer. His head for heights helped him, a decade ago, to pull off Europe's highest ever parachute jump. He's now aiming to go even higher, with a world record beating 148,000 foot leap from space. Tomas calls this a jump for the planet. I asked him why. It's just the tool to raise the awareness that we should support the weakest of us. And practically, what do you do with the money that you raise? What will you use it for? I would like to spend this money to buy the modular houses for the refugees. I would like to build a system all around the world to support the refugees just after the catastrophe. Landslides, uh, uh, hurricanes, everything, climate catastrophe. every climate catastrophe and give them the roof overhead, place to sleep and some place to take a shower or cook the meal. Tomas's Space Jump funds will provide a crucial lifeline for potentially thousands of climate refugees. Back at Santa Barbara Skydive Center, I'm preparing for a skydive from the highest legally allowed altitude in the United States. Because you're going 18,000 feet, and that's the only plane we have that can go that high. So, <laughs> all right. During your tandem okay. jump, you will be securely harnessed to an instructor who will guide you every step of the way. Tomas will be strapped to me. Oh, hey. With his 17 years of parachuting experience, I'll have nothing to worry about while free falling from 18,000 feet. This is actually what's going to hold us up. There is going to be a lot less oxygen up there. The most important is to relax the body yeah. just a little bit, okay? As we climb above 15,000 feet in a Cessna 208 caravan, a wave of dizziness hits me. I've read about this in my pilot theory books, how low oxygen levels can affect your body. But this isn't theory. Mask on, and I'm back to fine again. 120 miles per hour. Without a parachute from 18,000 feet, you'd hit the ground in a minute flat. Felix Baumgartner took a helium balloon to the edge of space and skydived back to Earth at the speed of sound. Then, Alan Eustace ascended further into the stratosphere and jumped, breaking the world altitude record. Tomas plans to go higher still, and hurdle back at an astonishing 1,700 kilometers per hour. You are aiming to beat the world record with this jump, right? Yes. What is the record right now? 41 kilometers. 41 kilometers, 41. and who, who did that? Uh, Alan Eustace. And I uh, received the email. I really like your story. I read your book. Your life is very interesting. If you will need some help from me, make me a phone call, Alan and Eustace. You also went to Richard Branson's Island. What yeah. was that like? He came to me and he said, "Hey, I know you want to jump from space and you want to do that from balloon." Yeah, I said, "Yeah." And we just chat a little bit about the technical stuff. It is such an amazing that I'm just a regular guy. But a regular guy with an amazing vision. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't think you should forget <laughs> that. Tomas also has the backing of Polish political icon Lech Walesa and Hollywood's Richard Gere, but not his own wife initially. So I expected, she said, great idea. And she said, no way, you will sign the paper that you will not do that. She's a lawyer, she's a attorney at law. His wife came around to the idea, eventually. So that day, what will happen? Right. The moment you wake up? That I will walk up at 2 a.m. Yep. Or maybe I will not sleep. <laughs> I, I think I, I won't. And then I have to spend a couple of hours breathing the clear oxygen. Okay. 
maybe six, maybe seven, I will go into the, the spacesuit. Tomás will then be driven to the launch platform, where he'll be attached to a helium balloon. And going up will take about two and a, two and a half hours. The most difficult moment of the jump yeah. is not the jump itself, it's first 600 meters the climbing up. Zone, right? This is yeah, the danger yeah, zone, right? This is the danger zone. If I will be detached from the, uh, from the balloon, there will be no way to open the parachute. Once successfully in space, Tomás will witness a sight that few have. I will do something for myself. It's just this two or three minutes, yeah. just watching space. This is, it will be my award, my personal award. And uh, at that altitude, you can see the curvature of the Earth. Yes. And then, <laughs> I will say go. <laughs> and this, this first 20 kilometers yeah. will be, it was like the half of the distance. The speed will be the biggest because there is no air. How fast will you be It will falling? be. 1.44 Mach speed of sound. And then I will go to the atmosphere. Yeah. It slows me down and I feel shaking. At this point, there's a risk of spiraling into a spin, but he's been training for that. Yeah, I can, I can spin like 20 minutes and we'll be okay. So there will be a couple of uh, aircrafts and the helicopters chasing me. Another uh, skydiver will jump out. He oh. opened the person that will be close to me. Oh. And if I will land, it's, and I will be not able to go, go out of the space, he will help me. My heart is still pounding after my own jump, but hurtling back to space at the speed of sound, that's adrenaline in overdrive. Jumping for the planet requires Tomás to risk his life up there, but rewards him by improving lives down here. And that's what it's all about for Tomás, helping others. From his mountain rescue days to now aiding climate refugees. He's kind, fearless, and he's a visionary. I know that he's going to get that view and it's going to be out of this world.